Hello boys and girls and everyone else. Welcome again to another episode of Science Video Lesson with Sir Ryan. And in this video lesson, we will going to talk about an organ system which doesn't care whether you are alive or not until it is done with its function. What is this organ system? Let's uh, go right into it. Let's not waste time anymore. And let's discuss the organ system necessary for the continuity of life. Alright, so here we are in our uh, topic for this uh, video lesson that we have here. So we are going to discuss the reproduction in humans, male and female reproduction. But uh, in this video lesson, we will just focus on one uh, one type of the one type of reproductive system, and that is the male reproductive system. Alright, so but before we go to the male reproductive system. Uh, concepts that we have right here so i just want uh, to show you this one so this is a roulette all right so this is a roulette and this uh game has something to do with our uh video lesson this uh episode okay so what do we have right here okay what do we have right here now what is the connection of this uh game to our uh video lesson okay so we have right here uh, a spinning wheel which contains a ball and then the ball will be the one will will be the one who will select the number or the winning number for this uh, game that we have uh, right here okay so as you can see there are two colors that you have right here we have black and red and then so many uh, numbers that you have right here now uh, I will not discuss on how this game was our game is played okay now uh, now, in order to win this game, in order to win this game, uh, you need to place a bet. Okay, you need to place a bet on different uh, portions of the boards that on the board that you have right here. All right, so we have here your side bet, and then we have here your uh, straight up bet that you have right here. Okay, so in this case, we will put some bets over here. Okay, so. Okay, so we'll not discuss any more the mechanics of this one. So there are a lot of uh, YouTube videos that will uh, teach you how to uh, play this one. All right. So in this case, we have uh, placed all, 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 all of our bets. And then if we try to spin this one, let's see if we will uh, win something. All right. So we won. All right, so we won $575. So let's see which is the winning bet. So that is 18. So we are fortunate enough. Okay, we are fortunate enough that we won this uh, number. All right, so we place this bet over this uh, area. All right, and it touches this number that we have, uh, the winning number that we have right here. Now, what is the what is the concept behind here? Now, if you will going to place a bet on just one number, do you think you will win? Alright, you will win something from this game. Yes, uh, definitely you will win. But the winning rate is very low. Alright, so the winning rate is very low. Unlike that, what we have right now, what we have here right now, we have a lot of bets or we place a lot of bets in different parts of this board. And, alright, once we spin this wheel, we won... Even though there are some numbers that are not uh, the that is not the winning number, still we won five hundred seventy five dollars in the process because we placed a lot of bets in different parts of this board. All right, that contributes to the higher chances of winning in this game. All right, so what is this higher chances of winning connected or how is it connected to our uh, topic for this video lesson? Okay, so it has something to do with strength in numbers, alright? So it has something to do with strength in numbers or uh, something to do with numbers, right? So, so that is what the male reproductive system is all about, okay? Strength in numbers, okay? Now, for what purpose and how they are, uh, how the male reproductive system is capable of producing a lot of uh, sperm cells, alright? So that will be on this topic, so just... Uh, Stay and listen with this uh, discussion that we have right here. Okay. So, <clears> okay. <throat> uh, in this 
video lesson, we were going to talk uh, the things that we have right here. So we have the parts and function, then we have the feedback loop, and then, then the sperm production, which is very important. So if you are curious enough on how the sperm uh, is being produced, right? And we have the diseases that is attributed to the male reproductive system, so the sexually transmitted infection. And we have the male birth control methods. So before I start this uh, discussion that I have right here, there are uh, a lot of sensitive uh, pictures that we have right here. All right, there are a lot of sensitive pictures that we have right here. So viewers discretion is advised. Okay, so that is the warning here. So without, uh, um, we don't want any, uh, we don't want to waste time anymore. Let's start with the overall look of the male reproductive system. Okay, so this is the overall look of the male reproductive system that we have uh, right here. So as you can see, the male reproductive system is made up of tubes. So from this tube that we have right here. So from this tube that we have right here and we have another tube over here okay and there's another tube over there so it is made up of tube connected to a series of tube okay so what are these tubes for and how uh what is their purpose okay in terms of the function of the male reproductive system okay so together with this uh lesson i will have the parts and function of each things that you see here in the overall uh, picture of the male reproductive system. Okay, let's get started. So the first one, the most important organ here is the testis. Okay, so the testis is the, is the organ that produces the male sex hormone and at the same time it produces the male sex gametes. Okay, so the testosterone and then the sperm cell is produced in this organ called testis and there are uh, there is a part there in the testis which is very important which is called the seminiferous tubule so the seminiferous tubule is the site where the sperm grow they develop and they are being transported uh, within the male testis okay so these are the seminiferous tubule now in the seminiferous tubule in the seminiferous tubule, there is or there are regions or there are places where the sperm cells are produced and the testosterone are being produced as well. So we called it the Sertoli cells. Okay, so the first one here, the first uh, region of the, the seminiferous tubule is called the Sertoli cells. This is where the sperm cells are being uh, stored, okay, developed, all right, and uh, being created. Okay, at the same time. So that is the Sertoli cells. And just like other organs, just like other organs in the body, the testis requires nutrients and oxygen. Okay, it requires nutrients and oxygen. And also it requires uh, a nerve system. Okay, it requires a nerve system to function properly. So these things are uh, present also in the testes, but they are connected to the testes via spermatic cord. All right, so these are uh, these are the things that are needed by the testes or testes in order to function properly. All right, so we have the seminiferous tubule and then the sertolysis that we have. So this is the testes. So the white one that you see here is the testes. And the other parts of the testes, the epididymis, the vas deferens that you have right here. All right, although the spermatic cord, you cannot see in this, uh, it is impossible to uh, see in this picture the spermatic cord, but it is there. All right, it is there. So, this is where the sperm cell is being uh, created inside the testis. And if you're going to dissect it, it looks like this. Right? So, as you can see, there are a lot of rooms for sperm production. Right? So, there's, there are a lot of rooms in the sperm production that you have right here. And each of the seminiferous tubule is capable of producing 1,500 sperm. Alright? So it is capable of producing 1,500 sperm, okay, uh, and being stored in the head of the, it is being stored in the epididymis after being uh, produced, okay. So let's try to find out what other things that we can find inside the seminiferous tubule, okay. So in the seminiferous tubule, we have right here the several spaces that you see here, these pathways, okay, that you see here. 
these are the places where the sperm are being produced and also the hey so the testosterone is also produced in this region as well okay so that is the testes and here's the epididymis okay just like what we have right here this is the epididymis okay so now another part of the seminiferous tubule still under the testes another part of the seminiferous tubule or uh, what we call the, we called it the interstitial all right interstitial or uh Leydig cells okay so we called it the Leydig cells they are located in the seminiferous tubule and they are responsible for the production of the testosterone okay they are uh, they are responsible in the production of the testosterone and testosterone as you all know it is very important in the male development all right development of body parts especially the development of the sperm okay so the growth and maintenance of cells are being uh, cells of the reproductive system is being maintained by the testosterone itself okay so that is the Leydig cells so where's the Leydig cells located so the Leydig cells is located outside the Sertoli cells right they are located outside the Sertoli cells and these cells that you have right here is, uh, is capable of producing testosterone which is needed by the Sertoli cells in order to kick in the production of the sperm cell okay so as you can see these are the cells these are the cells that eventually will become a sperm cell in the future. Alright, so there is a space over here. So as you can see, the Sertoli cells is made up of smooth muscle. So it tells us that uh, these smooth muscles that are found in the Sertoli cells is capable of peristalsis. Alright, so it's, it is capable of uh, doing peristalsis. So meaning to say that's how this uh, part moves. Okay. This this is this how it, this part uh this is how this part moves. Okay, so how does the, how does this thing work? Okay, so first one, the Leydig cells will produce testosterone. All right, so the Leydig cells that you have right here will produce testosterone as uh part of the concept, and this testosterone will go inside the Sertoli cell. Now, before uh, before it is being used by the before it is being used by the Sertoli cells, it will be uh, it will be collected, right? So it will be collected by the Sertoli cells by creating a, what they call androgen binding protein. So I will just represent the androgen binding protein here by this uh, shape that I have right here. So ABP. So ABP means androgen uh, binding protein. So this androgen binding pro protein from the name itself, it binds the protein or it binds the androgen, which is the testosterone that you have right here. It binds the androgen and collectively speaking, instead of having one uh, piece of testosterone, you will now have one cluster of testosterone. So making, in other words, from one uh, testosterone, it will become now a package of testosterone. Alright, so it will look like this. Eventually, it will look like uh, it will look like this. So the testosterone will attach on that uh, binding protein, and this particular uh, this particular substance or molecule that you have right here, this molecule now will be used by your this molecule that you have will be used now by your Sertoli cells in order to trigger the sperm production. Okay, so it will be used by the Sertoli cells. Okay, so that's how uh, these two regions work together in sperm production. Okay. Now, uh, after the sperm is being produced in the Sertoli cells, so as you can see here, it will migrate to the, uh, to the center so it, the sperm cells will migrate to the center that you have right here and it will be dumped okay it will be dumped at the middle of the um sertoli cell that you have right here so it will be dumped at this uh empty space that you have now where's this empty space uh leads to it goes to the next part which we will going to discuss later so all the sperm cells that are uh finished Okay, in this uh, sperm production that are finished, will go to the portal that you have right there via the peristaltic movement of the Sertoli cell. Okay, so as it goes there, okay, so before I reveal the next part, 
So this is how the sperm uh, is being produced in the Sertoli cell. So as you can see, we have here the start uh, starting point, which is the spermatogonia. Then it goes next. It becomes the primary spermatocyte. And we have the spermatids. Although there is no secondary spermatocyte in this picture, but still it is in there. And the spermatids will develop, it will undergo spermiogenesis, alright? So it will undergo spermiogenesis and it will become uh, the sperm that we all know. The head or the sperm that has ta uh, tail and head eventually, alright? So this is on the Sertoli cell. And the next part were the sperm cell. So as you can see here, the sperm cell will be uh, dumped in this portal and it goes to the next part which is called the epididymis all right so the epididymis just like a uh, car manufacturing facility just like a car manufacturing facility it is like a warehouse it is like the it is like a warehouse where it is storing or it stores the inactive sperm all right it stores the inactive sperm uh, in this uh, part that we have right here, the epididymis. Okay, so as you can see here, if you look at it under the microscope, so these are where, uh, this is where the inactive sperm, this is where the inactive sperm is being uh, stored. Okay, so as you can see here, it, is, uh, it contains a wall that protects these uh, inactive sperms over there. Okay, so what's the function of the epididymis? As I've said earlier, it stores inactive sperm before they enter the sperm duct for uh, ejaculation. Okay, so that is the epididymis. So the testis, overall, the testis is being protected by uh, scro2. Okay, so now, in order, uh, let me see if you have an idea with this uh, question that we have uh, right here. So what do you think is the reason why... Uh, all the male reproductive organs are located outside the body, especially the testes. Why it is created outside the body? Why it's not placed inside the body? Okay, so you can pause this video and try to find out the answer to that question. So write it down in the comment section below uh, this video, okay, if you have an answer. So the answer to that question is because of the temperature. Core body temperature is very, uh, or is, it, it is not conducive. It is not conducive in sperm production. So that is why, so that is why all the male reproductive organs are placed outside the body. Aside from doing the external fertilization, it is also for sperm production. Okay, so in order to maintain the, that, that optimal body temperature, for sperm production, the scrotum was uh, the scrotum was uh, created as a part of your testis that protects it. Okay, that protects the testis, and this scrotum adjusts depending on what temperature. All right, depending on what temperature uh, is outside or inside the body. Okay, so. Um, that's the purpose of the scrotum that we have right here. So it protects or it ensures that the sperm production uh, is being uh, continued with the right temperature outside or inside the body. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what happens when the scrotum encounters uh, two different temperatures. So we have here a uh, hot temperature. Okay, the scrotum descends. And when there is a cold temperature, the scrotum ascends. Okay, so that's the okay. That's how the scrotum adjusts to different temperature levels in the environment. Okay, so that is the scrotum. All right, next part. Okay, so the scrotum was only a. Uh, it is only an uh, accessory organ. Okay, so after the epididymis. You store now the cells, you store now the inactive cells, you go now to the next part which is called the vas deferens. Now the vas deferens is the connection between the ejaculatory duct and the epididymis. So these are, this comes in pairs. These are both connected to the two testes of the body which is left and right. Yan. So, and also these vas deferens are connected to the respective ejaculatory duct of the body, both left and right. Alright, so remember our body is a bilateral symmetry. 
Okay? It is bilaterally symmetrical. So, what is seen on the left will be seen on the right. Okay. So, this is how the bus deference uh, looks like. So, from the epididymis, the sperm will travel to the bus deference and off you go to the uh, ejaculatory duct. So, this is the ejaculatory duct. Alright? So, that's the end part. Okay, that's the next part that we have right there after the bus deference. Okay, so this is the bus deference. So this photo was taken during the vasectomy. Okay, this photo was taken during vasectomy and as you can see the bus deference is made up of a white tissue that you see here. And now vasectomy is a very important process of male, uh, male birth control method. Okay, so it will be uh, it will be um, it will be separated. This uh, this bus deference will be cut down into two, and then they uh, the two the two tubes will be separated together, and then uh, it will be uh, stitched out with uh, okay with a uh, surgical uh, surgical thread, and that's it. That's the vasectomy. So in other. Uh, in other picture, so we have right here, the vasectomy is being done. Okay, it's being done on this person that we have right here. Okay, so that is the vas deferens. Next one, the next part that we have right here is the ejaculatory duct. So what is the ejaculatory duct? So ejaculatory duct are uh, pair structures after the vas deferens. And this ejaculatory duct is very important because the sperm cell will now become a semen. On this part okay with the help of the glands that are attached to the ejaculatory duct okay so what are the glands that are attached to this uh, what are the important glands that are attached to this uh, ejaculatory duct okay so as you can see here the ejaculatory duct is located here okay in this uh, in this area okay now it is connected also to the seminal vesicle to the vas deferens and to the prostate gland Okay, so at the end of the ejaculatory duct, there is another gland as well, which, which we called it the bulbo-uretral gland or the Cowper's gland in general. Okay, so now these are the three glands that are important. Okay, the secretions of three glands, of these three glands that you have right here is very important in the one, nutrition of the sperm. Second, protection. Then, transportation and survival of the sperm. Okay. So, the first one here is the prostate gland. Alright, so the prostate gland is uh, the gland in the male reproductive system which is secret, uh, it secretes the prostate fluid. Now, the prostate fluid, it gives the distinctive smell and color of the sperm. Okay? It is also, it is also, um, it is also making the sperm or the semen, it makes the semen alkaline. All right, so alkaline is a basic uh, substance. All right, alkaline is a basic substance, and the reason why it is alkaline is because of the female reproductive system. The female reproductive system is uh, somehow acidic in nature. Okay, it is acidic in nature, so you need an alkaline, all right, an alkaline semen to counteract or to neutralize that acidic uh, environment. Okay, so that is the prostate gland. And also the prostate gland provides uh, provides some protection to the sperm, especially especially if it encounters the cervical mucus. Okay, the cervical mucus that is found in the cervix. These cervical mucus are very uh, very annoying to the sperm cell. It's because of one thing: it is uh, viscous. Since it is viscous, what happens is the sperm will likely to get trapped. Okay, the sperm will likely to get trapped on that mucus. So what will the prostate gland do? Or what will be the prostate fluid do? So it will uh, decrease the viscosity of the it will decrease the viscosity of the uh, cervical mucus to allow the sperm to enter. Okay. And also uh, also the prostate gland contains some um, contains some chemicals that will trigger the cervix to to do reverse peristalsis so it will uh, it will act like a vacuum and then uh, it will suck out all the sperm all right from the cervix 
to get inside as fast as, as fast as possible to the uterus. Alright? So, it gets inside. Okay? As fast as possible. So, because of the prostate fluid, it will trigger the reverse peristalsis of the cervix and then suck out or suck in all the all the sperm that are present in the outside the cervix. Okay? So, next one is the seminal vesicle. So, the seminal vesicle, it contains seminal fluid that is very essential to the sperm survival. Okay? Um, it contains a lot of nutrients. Uh, the seminal fluid contains high uh, high level of sugars that activates the sperm. Okay, it activates the sperm. It activates the tail of the sperm to uh, swim. Okay, and as we all know, the tail of the sperm is very important in its journey, or uh, in its journey inside the female uh, reproductive uh, system. So that is the seminal fluid. So it provides nutrition. Okay, also, also it makes also the semen alkaline, alright, so you know already the reason why it is uh, alkaline, and okay, that's the importance of the seminal vesicle, okay, so without the seminal vesicle, uh, technically or basically speaking, the sperm will not become active, okay, because of the nutrition it provides, so it contains high fructose uh, sugar, it contains high fructose sugar in the fluid and it transforms the sperm cell or with the mix, okay, with the cocktail of the sperm cell, prostate fluid, and the seminal fluid, it makes the sperm cell part of the semen, okay? So, that's the seminal vesicle. And the last one that we have right here is the Cowper's gland. Cowper's gland, although it doesn't mix with the sea or it doesn't uh, mix with the semen, but Cowper's gland is very important in cleaning out the urethra. All right, so the Cowper's gland is uh, important in cleaning out the urethra because it will secrete a fluid. It will secrete a fluid that uh, drains down. All right, so that goes down to the. All right, so it goes down to the urethra. So it goes down to the urethra. And what's the, what is the reason why it comes out first? Okay, what is what is the reason why it comes out first? It's because it wants to get rid of the uric acid found in the urethra. All right, so the fluid uh, will get rid of the uric acid found in the urethra. So this uric acid are traces or remains of the urine. Okay. It is uh, the remains of the urine present on your uh, urethra. Okay, so these are the uric acid. So once the uric acid is being cleared out, the semen will now pass through this tube. Alright, so the semen now will now pass to this tube and will not be uh, affected. Alright, it will not be uh, affected by the uric acid that is present on the urethra. Okay, so technically speaking, the Cowper's gland provide protection. Alright, it provides protection during the ejaculation. Okay, so these are the three glands and their secretion in the male reproductive uh, system. Okay, so let's focus on one gland which is called the prostate gland that we have right here. Okay, so the prostate gland is, uh, it looks like this and it contains the, okay, it contains the vas deferens connected to it. Okay, so the prostate gland is inferior to the bladder right it is inferior to the bladder and uh, prostate gland fluids are very important in the okay in the survival survivability of the sperm inside the female reproductive system okay now uh, prostate gland uh, is prone to uh, is prone to such uh, diseases like like that one the one that we have right here so this is what it looks like when the prostate is uh, enlarged Okay, and an enlarged prostate is uh, vulnerable to cancer. Alright, so an enlarged prostate is vulnerable to cancer. And as you can see here, as the cancer develops, as the cancer develops, it might likely to be, uh, it might likely to be transferred or transmitted to other body parts via the lymph nodes. Okay. That the cancer cells will travel through the lymph nodes and then it will affect or infect uh, other body parts, okay, if it is on the stage 4. So, the thing here is, while it is in stage 1, it is, uh, it must be prevented, okay, it must be prevented. And, uh, if it, in, 
if the cancer goes to stage 4 if the cancer goes to stage 4 you will likely to uh, die okay so as much as possible prevention during the stage 1 is uh, very important so not only that also detection is very important Okay, detection of the um, enlarged prostate is very important. So people or male males that uh, age that is age 50 and above experience this uh, enlarged prostate that you have right here. Okay, so this is the technique okay used in order to uh, detect if there is an enlarged prostate uh, in a person. Okay. Okay, next one is the urethra. Okay. So, after the ejaculatory duct, okay, so with all the interaction with the glands found in the male reproductive system, so the last part that we have right here is called the urethra. This is where the semen and the urine pass out of the body. Okay, so meaning to say, uh, the semen and the urine shares one common pathway, and that is the urethra. Now, uh, what makes it, uh, what makes it, uh, what makes it, separated as possible why does urine and semen do not mix all right what is the reason behind that one it's because of this muscle that you have right here the sphincter muscle okay so this sphincter muscle uh is capable of separating all right is capable of separating the semen and the urine depending on the situation during ejaculation the semen is very uh is prioritized and during urination urine is prioritized by the sphincter muscle so it depends on the situation so as not for the semen go to the urinary bladder okay so it prevents the semen from going to the urinary bladder now if you have a if you have a disease or if you have an illness called uh, retrograde ejaculation in which the sphincter muscle fails to um, fails to close during ejaculation so what happens is it goes inside the bladder so the semen goes inside the bladder instead of going out of the urethra so that is the retrograde uh, ejaculation so that is an okay that is a an illness all right so in which the sphincter fails to do its function all right so this is an accessory organ all right this is an accessory organ this is uh this is uh, this is, has uh, this has no part with regards to the reproduction process. So the penis, penis is an erectile organ. Now the purpose of penis is to deposit the sperm inside the vagina and to make the cut or to to cut the journey of the sperm as possible as much as possible. Okay, that's the purpose of the penis to cut the journey of the sperm or to make it short as much as possible to deliver it as short as possible or as near as possible to the egg cell inside the female reproductive system during sexual intercourse. Now, uh, there are different uh, forms of uh, penis over the animal kingdom. So as you can see in this bat that we have right here, so the penis is uh, quite different from human and also with the other organism like this uh, squirrel or flying squirrel that we have right here so its uh, penis is completely different from the usual uh, usual thing that we know all right so some penises are very large like the one that we have right here uh, from the zebra and elephant okay so we have here the penis of the kangaroo Okay, so penises uh, have different uh, shape and sizes over the animal kingdom, but they do one purpose, okay, but they do one purpose that is to deliver the sperm as near as possible to the egg cell, okay. So, but the thing here is penis is uh, not important in the overall reproductive process in the male reproductive system. Okay, so that's the penis. Now, in humans, we have, uh, if you are curious enough why the penis are going erect or why is the penis uh, hard during erection. Okay, so as you can see, there are several parts of the penis that you have right here. We have here the foreskin. We have the head of the penis, which is the glands that you have here. It contains the, it contains uh, nerves. Okay, it contains nerve endings for uh, sexual stimulation during sexual intercourse and this 
tissues that you have right here, this uh, tissues that you have right here is in very important in the erection process of the penis. So what does it look like? Now, as you can see here, so why does the why does the penis becomes hard during erection? Okay, so it doesn't contain bone. Okay, just like uh, if you are curious enough, it doesn't contain bone to make it hard. Okay, so as you can see here, it contains uh, it contains a lot of spaces that you have right here. Now, these spaces are filled with blood during uh, sexual arousal. And once it is filled with blood, okay, the penis now will become uh, hard and stiff. Okay, now hard and stiff pen, uh, hard and stiff penis is very important in sexual intercourse because uh, that is the requirement in order for it to enter the vagina. Okay, so it, it that is the requirement in order for it to be inserted inside the vagina. So that is why uh, it is hard and erect. Okay, so that is the, alright, so that is the penis, okay. So, these are the parts, okay, this, those are the parts and their function inside the male reproductive system. So, let me check if you uh, understand those parts and their function. So, let's have this uh, checkup quiz, alright, so checkpoint, okay. So, first one, what part of the testis produces testosterone necessary for male reproduction? Okay, so what part is that? Okay, so do we have it in the Leydig cells? So, is it the urethra? Is it the seminal vesicle? Or is it the prostate gland? Okay, so which of the following? Okay, so you can write your answer in the comment section below. Okay, so the answer here is the Leydig cells. Alright, so the Leydig cells is uh, responsible for the production of the testosterone necessary for male reproduction. Okay, next one. <clears throat> okay, next one. Which of the following is the correct pathway for the sperm cell in the male reproductive system? Okay, so these are the choices. Okay, so you write it down in the comment section below. So, what do you think is the answer to the question that we have right here? Which is the correct pathway for the sperm cell inside the male reproductive system? Okay, so the answer is letter C. Testis, vas deferens, ejaculatory duct. Okay, so that is the correct pathway for the sperm in its journey inside the male reproductive system. Alright, so with that, we are done with the parts and function. Let's go now to the male gametes. Okay, so the feature of the male gamete. Now, remember the roulette that I shown you earlier. So the roulette that I've show uh, I've sh uh, that I shown you earlier. It has something to do or the manner that we place our bet in order for for win that in order for us to win that game has something to do with the sperm cell. As we all know, there are a lot of sperm cell that is produced by the seminiferous tubule because that is very important number one for selection process all right evolutionary speaking that is for selection process and number two is uh survivability okay inside the female reproductive system so that is why in order to increase your uh winning rate in order to increase your winning rate uh, or in order for you to increase your chance in getting to the egg cell, you need to produce a lot of uh, sperm cell in the process. Okay, so this is what the sperm cell looks like. Okay, this is what the sperm cell looks like and it contains the acrosome, which is needed in order to uh, break down the contents of the barrier okay, of the egg cell. Alright, next one, we have the nucleus. This is the important cargo of the sperm cell. It contains half of the chromosome needed by the egg cell. Okay, it contains the half of the chromosome. So if it is human, it contains the 23rd. Alright, the 23rd chromosome or the, not the 23rd, the 23 chromosome needed to make a 46 complete chromosome human. Alright. So next one, it contains the centrioles needed for later uh, fertilization process. And we have the mitochondria and then the tail. Now, why? what is the reason 
Alright, what is the reason why there are a lot of mitochondria present in the sperm cell that you have right here? Okay, so you can pause this video and then type your answer in the comment section below. So what do you think there are a lot of mitochondria in this uh, sperm cell? Okay, now the answer to that is for survivability. As we all know, the female reproductive system is very long. So that is why it requires, or this, this sperm cell requires a lot of energy in order to survive the journey to the egg cell. So where does uh, where where will the mitochondria gets its energy? Remember the seminal vesicle in its uh, in its uh, seminal fluid. So the nutrition from the seminal fluid will give the mitochondria the energy that it needs for that journey. All right. So it the mitochondria will release its energy to the sperm cell that you have right here. Okay, in order for the sperm cell to travel from the first part of the female reproductive system down to the egg cell okay so the question is how does uh, how do we produce the sperm cell so as we all know it it happens in the testes it happens in the testes and it happens inside the sertoli cells so as you can see here inside the sertoli cells this is where the spermatogenesis takes place so okay so it starts with the primordial germ cell so once, okay, since the time that you were born, since the time that you were born, you you have a set of uh, germ cell that will develop to become a sperm cell. Now, when the when puberty kicks in, when puberty kicks in, it will tell your body or the primordial germ cell will develop to become a primary spermatocyte, all right, or the spermatogonium that we have right here. So before it becomes the primary spermatocyte. Then eventually, it becomes a sperm cell after that. Okay, so uh, it happens, all of this happens inside the Sertoli cell. So as you can see here, all the cells that represents this uh, diagram over here is inside the Sertoli cells. Now, in terms of, uh, in terms of number of chromosome, so let's use, human as, uh, let's use humans as reference. <clears throat> Okay, so let's start first with the spermatogonium. So as we all know, humans have 46 chromosome. Okay, now during the okay during its uh, development to become a primary spermatocyte, it still have 46. Okay, now after the first meiotic division, after the first meiotic division, it will become 23. All right, so the 46 chromosome will be splitted to 23 each. All right, so 23 each of the secondary spermatocyte now in terms of the sex chromosome each of the secondary spermatocyte contains one x or one sex chromosome it's either x or y so that is why fe uh, male okay males are the one that determines the sex of the offspring it is only males that determine the sex of the offspring because of this x and y chromosome that they have on their body all right Next one, uh, after the development of the secondary spermatocyte, it will undergo to become spermatids and it will undergo spermiogenesis for it to transform to the sperm that we know, that has head and that has tail respectively. So now, uh, what do you think? How many chromosomes does this sperm cell that we have right here contains? Okay, so it contains 23 chromosomes. So the chromosome will not be further anymore divided in the process. Okay. So it will not be uh, divided anymore. So it will contain 23 chromosomes. So it's either X. All right. And it's either uh, Y chromosome. So will eventually fertilize an egg cell. Okay. It will eventually fertilize an egg cell. And it will form now a complete set of human chromosome. That is uh, 46. So this is the spermatogenesis that we have. Uh, that is happening inside the testes. Alright, so we have right here the sperm cell in this picture. Okay, so now let's take a look, closer look at the sperm cell in this uh, video that we have right here. Okay, so you might want to subscribe to my, my microscopic world for this one. Okay, so as we, all, as we can see here, so the sperm cell under the low uh, magnification it looks like a tadpole 
Okay, so it looks like a tadpole. So these are the sperm cell. And by the way, the, the sperm cell that you have right here is in a semen. Okay, so they are uh, the sperm cell is swimming on the fluid that is produced by the seminal vesicle and then the prostate fluid in general. So there you have it. Okay, now increasing the magnification of the microscope increasing the magnification of the microscope will give you the overall look of the sperm cell so as you can see here here's the head and there's your tail over there okay and there are some uh, particles that are found on the semen okay uh, it's either the it's either made up of uh, tissues and other stuffs right so we don't know so yeah so these are the sperm cell now the sperm cell is affected or the shape of the sperm cell is affected by uh, the temperature of the body when the person has a uh, cold all right so if a person has a cold or flu all right so it will render the sperm uh, shape all right the sperm shape will be affected in general okay so if the person uh, drink an alcoholic beverage all right it, it uh, if the person drink an alcoholic beverages so the thing here the sperm also will be affected or if the person uh, is a chain smoker is, is a chain smoker so it will affect the sperm in general so either of the sperm that um, the sperm has no head it has a tail but it is not functioning or it has no tail or something like that so there are a lot of things that might affect the sperm shape in general so please be careful on those uh, chemical substances okay that we have right there okay so these are the sperm under a high magnification okay very high magnification over there over here okay so in a high power magnification so Okay, you can now see uh, what the sperm uh, looks like okay in uh, very beautiful detail that we have right here okay okay sperms are larger than uh, sperms are smaller than the blood cells okay okay so these are the sperm cells okay um, these are very uh, one of the most important uh, gamut okay in terms of uh, reproductive processes okay in all uh, animal kingdom okay so not only in animal kingdom but also on uh, plants also have sperms okay but they look different okay like what we have right here okay so let's have this one okay now what what kind of uh, proportionality that we have right what what kind of proportionality do we see right here now as you can see here the sperm size is inversely proportional to the body weight of the organism or body size of the organism okay now uh what do you think is the reason behind that one okay what do you think is the reason why uh the body size is uh inversely proportional to the sperm size of each of these uh, animals that we we featured right here okay so you can comment it down uh, you can comment it down in the comment uh, below of this uh, in the comment section below this video okay you can put your answers there okay so I again the question is why do you think that uh, why do you think that the sperm size is inversely proportional what is the reason why the sperm size is inversely proportional to the body size of the organism. Alright, so to answer that one, uh, there are two reasons. Number one is the length of the female reproductive system. So logically speaking, the size of the organism reflects the length or the size of the reproductive system. I'm talking of the female reproductive system because the, the male reproductive system has done already its function. It is the sperm already. Okay, it is the size of the sperm. Now, in order for uh, it to, uh, no? in order for it to, uh, in order for it to uh, be, uh, in order for it to go that way, okay. So the body size reflects 
the size of the reproductive system of female. Okay? So, the smaller the body size, the smaller the reproductive system. So, the shorter it is. Okay? Then, the larger the body size, the larger the reproductive system, so the more uh, pathway or the longer the pathway. Okay? Inside, uh, the longer the pathway to the egg. Okay? The longer the journey of the sperm, Okay, the longer the journey that will uh, that will that the, the, the sperm will travel inside the female uh, reproductive uh, system. So that's that is one. The second reason is selection pressure. Selection pressure. Now, the smaller reproductive system, the smaller reproductive system tends to select uh, tends to filter out or undergo less selection pressure okay it undergoes uh, less selection pressure those animals like the mouse that you have right here tends to have less selection pressure in terms of uh, selecting the sperm okay in the process next one uh, in terms of these large animals that you have right here in terms of these large animals so the selection pressure here is very uh, high Okay, it's it is very high. Number one, you have a very lengthy female reproductive system, so that is why some of the sperms will not be able to make it to the egg. Some of the sperm will not be able to reach out the egg and eventually die along its journey. So that is one selection pressure. So that is why uh, the most um, the most uh, sturdy or the most uh, uh, should how should I say this one? The most tough, yeah. Okay, so the most or the toughest sperm, all right. The toughest sperm is the one or the one that will survive. Um, okay, I uh, means uh, uh, the one that will survive inside the environment, inside the uh, inside the cruel environment of the female reproductive system is the one that will fertilize the egg in general. So that is the selection pressure that we have right here. So again, the answer to that question, why is it uh, inversely proportional? Why is the body size inversely proportional to the sperm size? Number one is the length of the female reproductive system. Okay, so the shorter the, the female reproductive system, the larger the sperm size that you have uh, right here. So you don't need, the second one is you don't need to uh you don't need a lot of selection pressure if you have a very short uh reproductive uh female reproductive system in general so that's the reason okay so that's the answer to that question regarding the body size and the sperm size that we have over here okay all right so that is the male uh that is the male repro or that is the male gametes Okay, and it's a uh, function in the male reproductive system. Okay, all right. So the next part uh, of this discussion that we were going to have right here is the feedback loop and the sperm production. All right. So what is this feedback loop and how? Uh, what are the interaction? Okay, what is the interaction between the hormones? Okay, that is happening in the male reproductive system enables us to see how the sperm is being produced. Okay, so let's go to that. Okay, so these are the hormones that are responsible for the sperm production. So you should, uh, you might, you might want to take note these uh, hormones that we have right here. So the first one is the follicle stimulating hormone. Okay, so the first one is the follicle stimulating hormone which targets the Sertoli cells and we have the luteinizing hormone which targets the Leydig cells. Now, if you want to know, alright, if you want to know where these hormones are being secreted, so just click the link above, okay, for my uh, video lesson about the endocrine system. So it contains these uh, two hormones that we have right here. So for you to have an idea what is uh, about hormones and about these two hormones and where they are secreted. Alright, so these two hormones that you have right here, okay, these two hormones that you have right here are very important in the sperm production in general. Now, they are being controlled, they are being controlled by uh, another hormone that comes from the hypothalamus, 
and that is the gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH. Alright, so in this case, in the sperm production that we have right here, we have an axis, alright, we have an axis called the HPG axis. Okay, so we have it, the HPG axis. Okay, actually there are a lot of axis inside our body or that there are that is happening on our body so aside from this H hpg we have hpa we we have hpa which is uh, which stands for hypothalamic pituitary uh, adrenal all right so there is also hpt hypothalamic pituitary thyroidal okay so those are some examples. Okay, so in this case, we will use the HPG, which is the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal. Alright, so gonads, which targets the ovary or the testis. Alright, so we have here the testosterone, which is very essential in the male reproductive system. Alright, so let's go now to the hormonal feedback and the regulation of the male reproductive system. Alright, so again... I just click the link all right just click the link uh to the video that will uh that will show you what is the difference between the negative and the positive feedback all right so let's take a closer look about this one uh, on this diagram now in this diagram there are a series of stimulation and inhibition processes okay now to start with as we all know that the hypothalamus is the one that controls the endocrine system all right. Now, once the hypothalamus uh, detects that you are capable now of uh, producing sperm, so it will secrete the GnRH instructing the anterior pituitary gland. So the anterior pituitary gland uh, is the one that secretes or that secretes the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone that you have right here. Right, so that's the anterior pituitary gland. And eventually, this uh, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimula stimulating hormone will make its way to the interstitial cells or earlier, we know, we know, we know this one as uh, Leydig cells. Right, and the sustentacular cells which is also known as the Sertoli cells. Right, so these are the uh, target organs of the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone now uh, although it looks like okay although it looks like that they are secreted um, simultaneously but uh, in timing the luteinizing hormone is the one that is secreted first followed by the follicle stimulating hormone why it's because you need to secrete first the testosterone okay you need to secrete first the testosterone before you do the sperm production all right before you do the sperm production because uh sperm production also relies on the testosterone in the first place okay so with the action of the androgen binding protein which we discussed uh earlier okay so with the action of the androgen binding protein it will trigger the production of the sperm now, as we all know, that the testosterone has a lot of effects in our body, especially in the central nervous system, the bones and then the muscles in our body, the maintenance of the secondary or male characteristic that we have, and the accessory organs that we have in our body are all uh, maintained by the, te the testosterone that we have right here. Okay, so... <clears throat> Now, what will happen? Okay, what will happen if you have uh, too much testosterone that are produced? Okay, you don't need to worry because there is what they call negative feedback. As we all know, negative feedback reduces certain uh, secretions, reduces certain secretions in order to get back to normal. Okay, so if there are testosterone that are overly secreted, so what will happen is uh, it, will uh, it will send a negative feedback to the hypothalamus instructing it to stop secreting this hormone the GnRH so the GnRH will uh, stop secre stop will be stop uh, will stop secreting then it will affect the anterior pituitary then the overall process will stop okay so the overall process will stop now how about uh, the 
how about the number of sperm cell now if if the sertoli cells targets or if the sertoli cells already reach certain number of uh, certain number of sperm cells that are produced it will trigger a negative feedback instructing the pituitary gland to stop secreting the follicle stimulating hormone so when the follicle stimulating hormone stops secreting then it will affect the sertoli cells and it stops the generation of sperm it stops the creation of sperm all right otherwise uh, the reason why there is no continuous sperm production in our body because it requires energy to do so okay so imagine uh, your sperm cell will continue to produce 24 7 all right it's that it doesn't stop for a while it will consume a lot of energy it will eat up your uh, it will eat up a lot of energy in our body so once in a while it will stop and then continues again all right so in the process okay so this is the feedback mechanism this is the feedback mechanism and the sperm production okay the interaction of hormones inside the body in the male reproductive system okay so that is the hormonal interaction now once again uh, let's trace the pathway of the sperm all right from its production then to outside of the body okay so as we all know that the sperm production started with the testes okay next one it goes to the epididymis once it uh it is being produced then it goes to the vas deferens and it will travel to the ejaculatory duct where it will meet these three glands that you have right here it will meet these three glands then their secretions will make the sperm cell to become a semen all right so after the ejaculatory duct it goes to the urethra then it goes out of the body all right so these are the pathway okay this is the pathway of the journey of your sperm from its production out going out of the body all right so to check if you understand uh this uh portion of the lesson that we have right here so what is secreted by the pituitary gland that triggers the production of sperm cell all right so these are the choices again you can pause this video and think of your uh selection okay for the answer to this uh checkpoint that we have right here okay so the answer is all right so the answer is the follicle stimulating hormone because uh, follicle stimulating hormone targets the sertoli cells which is uh in turn triggers the sperm production okay so without the fsh sperm production will not uh proceed okay all right so let's go to checkpoint question number four all right so if the primary spermatocyte has 24 number of chromosome okay and how many chromosome does each spermatids contain? Okay. So these are the choices. We have 48, 24, 6, or 12. So which one? All right. Is uh, how many chromosome does your spermatid contains? Okay. So write your answer in the comment section below. Okay. So the answer here is 24. All right. So the answer is 20, or rather, okay, just to clarify. Okay, just uh, I just carried away. The answer is 12. Alright, so the answer here is 12. Why? Because the primary spermatocyte is the full number of chromosome. It contains the full number of chromosome. So what happens to the spermatids after that is being it is being divided. Alright, so the 24 number of chromosomes there is being divided into none other than 12. All right, so that is the number of chromosome that's the okay, does each spermatids uh, contain. Okay. So now uh, we go now to the next part of our uh, video lesson, which is called the uh, disease in the male reproductive system. So these are sexually transmitted infection that affects the male reproductive system in general. Alright, so infections transmitted during sexual contact or also known as uh, sexually transmitted disease or sexually transmitted infection. So these are infections uh, that are transmitted through sexual, inter uh, sexual activity. Alright, so will it be oral, anal, or uh, typical 
or the normal sexual activity, sexually transmitted disease can be transmitted all throughout these types of activity. Alright, so others can be cured by antibiotics. When we talk about antibiotics, these are uh, sexually transmitted diseases that is caused by uh, bacteria. Alright, and some of them are some of them are caused by viruses. Alright, some of them are caused by viruses and some of them are not curable. Alright, there are there is no cure yet for these uh, diseases. So, okay, so again, warning, there are a lot of uh, pictures here which is very sensitive. Uh, viewer's discretion is advised. Alright, so now there are there are groups of STDs or STIs, alright? So the first one is uh, the STDs that causes genital lesions or sores, okay? So the next group is the one that, uh, the next group is the one that causes inflammation, alright? So the next group is the one that causes systemic or bodily, uh, it affects all, the, all, it affects your bodily function. Okay, in general, or these are called systemic STDs. These are STDs that are being transmitted all throughout different body parts and affects your body in general. Alright, so these are the three groups. So let's take a closer look on what are these uh, STDs that I have right here. So we have the chlamydia. Alright, so chlamydia is caused by a bacteria called chlamydia trachomatis. Alright, so this is the head of the penis that you have right here, which is infected by a chlamydia okay so as you can see there are a lot of uh, sores all right so there are a lot of sores that you will see in this picture that you have right here so there are a lot of sores okay so it also affects different organs like the eyes that you have right here okay also uh if the person do oral sex so the chlamydia can climb its way or can go to throat all right mouth of a person Alright, so that is a chlamydia. Right, chlamydia can be treated by antibiotic. Alright, so next one is the gonorrhea. So the gonorrhea, this is the bacteria that causes the gonorrhea. So gonorrhea is caused by a bacteria called, this is the Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhea. Alright, so this is the Neisseria gonorrhea. And one of the prominent uh, symptoms of a gonorrhea is uh, there's a pus. All right, there's a pus discharge in the urine, all right, in the urine or in the semen, okay, something like that, okay. And there are, uh, there are a lot of uh, instances that it affects also other body parts, so like the one that you have right here, the occurrence of this uh, source, okay, in the body. All right, next one, we have uh, another picture of a penis that has a uh, gonorrhea is infected with gonorrhea so as you can see here the pus is uh, being discharged on the penis that we have right here all right gonorrhea can be uh, treated with uh, antibiotic all right so next one the hum human immunodeficiency virus all right the one that causes aids all right so this is incurable and this thing that you have right here, this virus targets the T cells. Alright? Once it targets the T cells, it rendered it useless. Alright? It kills the T cells. So once it kills the T cells, it your body is uh, vulnerable now to certain infections. Alright? So even to simple infections, you might uh you might die. Alright. Now the symptoms of AIDS. The symptoms of AIDS are very uh, hard to uh, hard to find. All right. Normally, normally a person with AIDS, a person with AIDS uh, looks normal. They look normal unless they are being tested. That's the time that you will know that the person has AIDS if it is being tested. But uh, if you look generally, if you look at the person you will not see any symptoms or any uh, lesions or sores or something like that uh, that is caused by AIDS. Alright, so AIDS can be transmitted by uh, fluids. Alright, so fluid uh, like blood transfusion, something like that, sexual contact, alright, like that. 
Okay? So, there are some rare cases that uh, AIDS can cause some lesions on the skin like the one that you have right here. These are very uh, rare cases. But generally, if you look at the person, uh, it will, the person still looks normal. Alright? So, that is the AIDS. Okay. The, uh, as of now, there is no, there's no cure for the AIDS. Alright? There are some... Um, there are some drugs. There are some drugs that uh, decreases the decreases the overall effect of AIDS. Okay, so it um, it slows down the infection rate. All right, so it slows down the spread rate of the virus inside the body. So there is all there there is a drug on that, but in terms of cure overall cure but there are some but there are some people who are said to be cured by uh, by some experimental drugs okay uh, they are cured with aids or something like that so we don't know it yet we don't know yet if these drugs are very effective in treating this uh, virus that we have right here or the disease that we have right here all right so genital herpes is a viral uh, std Alright, so genital herpes is a viral STD. So these are the lesions that you might want to see on the person that has uh, genital herpes. And on the penis, it is very uh, prominent, this genital herpes. So now the genital herpes also affects the mouth. Alright, of the person or even the eyes. Okay, uh, it can go there. Okay. So, the next one is the genital warts. So, genital warts is caused by human papilloma virus or HPV. Alright, so as you can see, there is an outgrowth, alright, on the skin of the penis of this uh, person that you have right here. So, this outgrowth, or also known as the warts, contains uh, the human papilloma virus. Now, if it is transmitted to the female, if it is transmitted to the female reproductive system, it can cause cervical cancer. Alright, so it can cause cervical cancer. So that is why uh, abstinence or being loyal to your partner is advised. Okay, uh, regarding this one. Because uh, even if you have this kind of disease, you can be the one that will cause cervical cancer to your partner. Alright, so these are the genital warts that you see here. And what we have right here is the syphilis. Alright, so the syphilis is uh, a viral infection, okay, a viral STD, which causes uh, bur or lesions in the reproductive system. Okay, it, it also affects the uh, body as well. It also affects the body as well when it is uh, not being treated. Alright, it's not being treated. Now, syphilis is uncurable, but there are drugs that uh, slows down its infection rate. Alright, so it slows down its uh, spread rate. So that is the syphilis. Now, other sexually transmitted infections in male, uh, namely we have the trichomoniasis. It can cause itchiness in the genital organs. Okay, the trichomoniasis and the hepatitis B and C is also a sexually transmitted infection. Although se hepatitis is uh, affects the liver. Although hepatitis affects the liver, but still uh, hepatitis virus can be transferred via fluid transfusion. Alright, so like blood transfusion or something like that. So it will affect, it will climb its way to the liver. So hepatitis B and C are very um, deadly. Alright, so next one. In, in previous years, we have heard the news in Brazil that there are some uh, viruses that are carried by the mosquito and causes and causes uh, small heads to this uh, offspring that you have right here. Now, we call it the Zika virus. Alright, so these viruses are carried out by the mosquito. Once you are beaten by this mosquito, it will affect, uh, if you are pregnant, it will affect the offspring that you are carrying. Okay, so these are the sexually transmitted infections in male. So, general. Okay. So, the next part is the male uh, birth control methods. So, what are the birth control methods available? Alright, for males. Okay. Now, we have here the condom. Condom is made up of latex or polyurethane. 
Alright, and it is inserted to the penis, alright, it is inserted in the penis before sexual uh, intercourse. Okay, so the condom has a uh, staggering 98%, okay, 98% efficiency in preventing pregnancy. And also, it uh, prevents you to have a uh, sexually transmitted infection. Alright, so that's the condom. Okay, so... Next one is uh, the oral contraceptives. Okay, so male birth control pill. So, although it is under development, it is under development because there are some birth control pill for males that affects or there, has, there, has a, uh, there is a side effect. Alright, there is a side effect. So, they, uh, the development of this birth control pill is still on experimental. Alright, because uh, they want to eliminate this side effect as much as possible. But it will be a, you know, it will be a game-changing uh, birth control method because uh, in order to in order to control the birth, okay. So male birth control is uh, very essential. Okay. Alright, so we have here the spermicide. So the spermicide are used uh, together with condom and the spermicide here contains chemicals that uh okay that kills the sperm in general okay so we have here injectables or contra injectable contraceptives or implants so the implants that you have right here this uh this small looking tube that you have right here contains hormones that uh that prevents or that stops the, the production of sperm Okay, so again, these are still uh, underdeveloped, okay, under development, but uh, I think there are some uh, implants now that are available in the market. So we don't know yet you know, what are those implants. And these implants are very, it will likely to be, uh, be a game changer in the future. Okay, so as we all know, okay, uh, birth control methods are very important right now because of our uh, booming population, okay, here on earth. Right, so next one is vasectomy. Although it doesn't guarantee you, although it doesn't guarantee you to be protected to STD, so it will not protect you from STD, but the thing there is it has 100% guarantee that it will prevent pregnancy. So what you have right here is uh, the surgeon, the one, the one, the person that is uh, doing the operation here, will pull out your uh, vas deferens and cut it, and then uh, tie it up with surgical uh, thread, and then eventually the sperm will not have any more pathway or the sperm will not go anywhere out of your body. Okay, so that is the vasectomy. So again, uh, it will not protect you from STD, but it is guaranteed uh, a birth control, guaranteed that it will not uh, cause pregnancy, okay, at a level of 100%. Okay, so that is vasectomy. So these are the birth control methods available, okay, these are birth control methods available so far for uh, males, right, so... Now, in order to check or in order for me to see if you understand uh, part of this part of this uh, video lesson, let's uh, answer this uh, check up or checkpoint questions that we have right here. There are two checkpoint questions that I have right here. So the first one is, which of the following is the causative agent of acquired immune, immunodeficiency disease? All right, or immunodeficiency disease. So these are the choices that we have right here. Okay, so you might want to pause this video before I reveal the answer. Okay, so for you to find out if you if your answer is uh, if you if you understand this lesson very well. Okay, so for this question, the answer is all right. So the answer is HIV, so human immunodeficiency virus. All right, that is the causative agent. All right. So, the next question, the last question that I have right here. Now, uh, what male contraceptive device usually made of latex that is inserted in the penis before sexual intercourse? Alright, so, these are the choices. Okay, again, you can pause the video to give you time 
uh, to answer this uh, question. Okay. Now, the answer to this question is letter B, condom. Alright, so did you get all checkpoint quizzes, correct? Alright, so just put it in the comment section if you got all the checkpoint qu uh, quizzes correctly. So all, all of, uh, there are six of them in this uh, video lesson. So if you got them all right, then, um, well, you did listen to my uh, video lesson. And you pay attention uh, to the concepts that I, uh, I, I discussed in this uh, video lesson that we have right here. Alright, so with that. And that was the male reproductive system. Come join me again in the discussion for the female reproductive system in the next video lesson episode. But for now, if you did get some value from this video lesson, just hit the like button. And if you have questions, suggestions, just uh, don't hesitate to write it down in the comment section below. It will help me in the algor algorithm of my uh, YouTube channel. And... If you want to be updated with uh, a lot of science video uh, lesson in the future, just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell beside it. So that's it. See you next time, guys. Stay safe and peace out.